Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from Electric, and as you can see here, I'm enabling autopilot right here on this short section of double yellow line, and the lines go away, but autopilot's still on, and we're passing cars. So we are running software version 2019.40.2.1, and you are watching Curvy Country Road Test number 11, and as you can see here, we are in autopilot passing all these vehicles and the car is smart enough to realize that it needs to stay on the right side of the road, which is really, really impressive. Now here's the curve coming up where you heard my wife at the first part of this video kind of get a little bit nervous. But so what we're gonna do here is, if you're unfamiliar with this test, I really highly recommend you go back and look at previous software versions. This test that I've done over and over, this is test number 11, you are able to see very clearly just how well Tesla's autopilot is doing over a longer period of time or over several software updates. This first section of road, as you can see, this right curve here is very easy for the car to maintain its lane position. Although it is a pretty significant curve on this two lane road, it's not too difficult where the car isn't able to handle it. But as you can see later on in this test, we do get to some really, really hard turns. So check out this intersection that is coming up right here. So as you saw there, the car kind of turned in front of me and the autopilot started slowing down. And then just with my hands on the wheel, autopilot disengaged, which I was really confused on why it would disengage there. Although I didn't turn the wheel at all. So it, it almost like maybe I had too much pressure on the wheel. Um, although autopilot did see the car turning in front of me and it did slow down. So we're getting to a smaller section or like a little portion of a town coming up here. And so the car does slow down and we do have a little right hand turn. So I'm gonna slow the autopilot down. Now with the software update, I can go below 18 miles an hour. So I'm gonna go all the way down to 15, maybe to five miles per hour, turn on the turn signal and see if it turns but it isn't able to make that right-hand turn. Now, again, it's not designed to do that. It's only designed to change lanes. I'm sure there's a developer software version that's out there now. Um, and you can see that you tap on the speed limit sign and it'll get you right back up to the speed limit. So that's a little quick shortcut for you guys that don't know that. Now that only works in the Model 3. It doesn't work in the S and the X um, that don't have a touch screen showing the speed limit. So here we are, we're in autopilot and we are getting ready to merge into some traffic and it's not designed to do this, right? So let's see here, it does see this blue car right in front of us and it does get a little close, but it is able to merge. Now it did get a little close for maybe most people, but I would say I had at least 12 to 14 inches um, away from that blue car that's in front of us. So autopilot was able to merge into traffic a little bit there, which was pretty impressive. Here is where autopilot pays for itself. Now, if you re just have regular autopilot, you know that it is fantastic and performs its best in this kind of stop and grow heavy traffic. Now, we do have the second part of our test coming up, but first I wanted to talk to you guys about Brogue RV. They have these performance pedals. Now, I was really skeptical at first because I thought they kind of clipped on and I wasn't sure how good a quality they were until I actually took them out of the package and realized that they were real metal. And so I was really impressed. And then I realized that you actually peel off the brake pedal. So the brake pedal was peeled, uh, stuck on to this metal portion and you then install the aftermarket brake pedal on there. And it looks really nice. It looks identical to the performance pedal that you get when you have a performance model three with the performance package. So that's the brake pedal install. The uh, accelerator, I almost said gas pedal Ew. install, is a little bit more challenging. Nothing peels off of the accelerator pedal and you just kind of uh, fold over the corners. Now, just make sure you get all four corners on there. I found this one a little bit more challenging than the brake pedal, but definitely something that you can do fairly easily. Now, this is not something that is a huge uh, expense, like if you actually got the performance package on a Model 3, but it's definitely something that I've noticed that I really enjoy and I think it looks really nice. And also, I think the price is right. So I'm gonna leave a link down below where you can pick that up on Amazon for 14 bucks. So not even 15 bucks. It's got free shipping and it'll arrive before Christmas. So let's continue on with country 
road test, curvy country road test number 11. So we are crossing these train tracks here and in several of my other videos, you guys have said, will it stop at these train tracks? And after all these tests, I've never been able to get it to where it stops at the physical train tracks and line it up with a train crossing. In my software update video, I did show you guys how this software version has stop sign detection. So let's scroll down the cruise and test it here. So it is identifying the stop sign and warning me that I'm running the stop sign. So let's enable autopilot here. I'm gonna slow it down. This is in the previous test where it did fail significantly and it looks like it does the same thing again. So here is test number 10 and you can see we had a lot of other traffic on the other side of the road. And there is a gap in the double yellow line here and I think that's why the car starts to veer over to the other side of the road. My best guess is that break in the double yellow line, as you can see here, that same break is still there, but that's a pretty significant um, over the double yellow line and not that big of a curb. So if you have an opinion on why you think it failed on that curve, let me know down in the comment section below. So here we go into a couple curves. The speed limit is gonna kick up here from 25 miles an hour to 35 miles an hour. We have our first significant curve coming up. We're gonna to go to the left-hand side. So right now we're at 40 and the car is already starting to slow down before the curve, which I like to see down to 31, 31 miles an hour around that curve, which makes me as a driver very, very comfortable. So we have a couple other curves coming up that are fairly easy, like this bending one, although it is a blind turn going down and the car does beautifully on that and does not slow down, although it went down to 39 miles an hour right there on that straightaway. So we have another really, really challenging curve where the car has failed several times in several other tests. So let's see how it does on this one. Okay, so as you can see here, we did have to take over on the test. So this is a blind le left hand curve down and it did take over immediately. So in test number 10, you can see that it was able to pass this test and we had about the same amount of light, although it went over to that right edge significantly. And this test, it did end up failing and said take over immediately. Very unfortunate to see the autopilot system regress there. Let me know down in the comment section why you think the autopilot kind of gave up right in the middle of the intersection and just said, oh, I can't do it, take over immediately. So we have a big right turn coming up here that is blind, although it is a wider turn. And the car is getting a little bit over to that left-hand side. You can see on the blue screen there. And the car does okay on that turn. I would have liked to see it a little bit more centered in the lane. The road goes straight for a little bit longer until we get to a couple downhills with a left and then a long blind right turn. So take a look here. So we first have a left turn. So the car is still maintaining that 40 miles an hour, get up to 41 because we're going downhill a little bit. And then we have a blind turn to the right coming up here. So let's see if the car does slow down like it did before in a previous update. So we're still maintaining that 40, still at 40, did not slow down at all. So I guess the car realized that it didn't need to slow down or in this particular test, it realized that it didn't need to slow down. So we now have a left turn coming up here. So keep your eye on the speed limit and it does not slow down, although it did go down to 39 miles an hour. And now we have a very difficult turn coming up here. It is a left turn that it goes down at the same time. So we are gonna see what happens on this turn coming up here, still at 40 miles an hour, not slowing down, and I do end up having to take over. It gets way past that white line, getting really close to the edge of the road there, so I do end up taking over. So pretty poor for performance on this curvy country road test compared to other software versions. So we do have a left turn coming here, and it gets really, really close to almost crossing that double yellow line, although I'm keeping maximum tension and always keeping my hands on the wheel as Tesla recommends. So definitely do not recommend you trying this. Um, I know that I feel safe because I'm keeping maximum tension on the wheel. So we have our last turn coming up here, left turn, and it does start to cross and you can see that I'm getting really close past that white line to the edge of the road over there. So do have to take over there. So we had a lot of fails in this test. This first fail going pretty slow, which was sad, and then this give up in the middle of the intersection, and then these past two turns where I did have to take over. So 
Don't start crying yet though, because this autopilot system is rapidly advancing. And again, what I'm doing here, this test that I'm doing is not designed for autopilot in its current state. A future software version is going to give us the ability to drive on these backcountry roads. And this is only one test. So keep in mind that multiple tests are needed in order to prove that a software version is moving forward or advancing versus a regressing. I definitely don't think that this autopilot version is regressing. I think that it struggled a little bit on some of these curves, that's all. I wanna encourage you, yes, you right now watching this video, to head over to my Patreon and support this channel for as little as $1 a month. Special shout out to Akrama Tool and Nicola Pro for supporting this channel at the top tier. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share this video with a friend. I'll see you in the next one.